position, the pilot has set the conditions for the front seat gunner to engage the target with a radar guided missile. identifies further enemy vehicles and calls for the pilot to reposition the aircraft for another strike, this time electing for a salvo of rockets followed by high explosive 30mm cannon rounds. tracked by the gunner, providing a steering cursor to aid the pilot who will aim and fire the rockets. assessment, he identifies enemy personnel attempting to engage the aircraft with a shoulder launch surface to air missile. The threat call is communicated within the cockpit, instructing the pilot to conduct another rocket strike from alternate attack heading. The crew then work together to update a set of pre engagement checks, ensuring all systems are configured correctly for another strike. eliminated, the crew can climb into a wheel. Circling the target, the gunner's scan with the cameras is interrupted as the pilot spots enemy soldiers from a dug-in position, bringing a heavy machine gun to bear in the aircraft's direction. Mounted monocle as a sight, the pilot slaves the gun to his eye line and, and engages simply by looking at the target and pulling the trigger. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the tactical demonstration of how Apache crews work together to operate and fight their aircraft. Crews trained to do this in all weathers, by day and night, often working at extremely low level. The attack helicopter display team is made up from operational crews from frontline units of the attack helicopter force based at Wattisham in Suffolk. Today we have Major Tim Fitzway at the controls with Star Sergeant Mark Skelding in the front seat, co-pilot gunner position. Establishing in the high hover at 800 feet, you can see the Apache's a power powerful hover performance. 
Ashi. A dive with 80 degrees nose down with a cyclic stick or rolling through 90 degrees whilst almost vertical. Tim is a senior flying instructor with the attack helicopter force. He has over 4,000 flying hours, including over 1,200 in the Apache and 1,000 in the Wildcat. He has operational experience in Afghanistan and Northern Ireland. A wing over is a tactical return to target manoeuvre flown in a manner to use the energy and momentum of the aircraft to bring it quickly into weapons release parameters. A wing over is flying at 90 degrees angle of bank using all three controls to balance the aircraft around the turn as they return to crowd centre for a move we like to call the bunt. The bunt sees the aircraft pitch from 90 degrees nose up to 90 degrees nose down at the highest point of the manoeuvre. Helicopters and fixed wing of the Army Air Corps can also provide reconnaissance, direction of artillery and water fire, command support to ground units and tactical mobility, such as positioning forces, conducting resupply or extracting casualties. The majority of the Corps is held at high readiness for operations to deploy alongside either the Army's division, the Air Assault Task Force, as well as commitment to supporting special forces both in the UK and around the world. The transition to the ECHO model Apache will ensure that the Corps will continue to operate the best attack helicopter in the world. A significant update to the longbow that you see today, the AH-64E Apache Guardian will be fully integrated with the new Royal Navy Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers to continue providing a vital land and maritime strike capability. The Apache has four weapons pylons mounted on the snub wings. These stations can be fitted independently with either CRV-7 rocket launchers, Hellfire missile rails or external fuel tanks for increased range and endurance. As you can see today, gunship has been configured with a mix loadout of rockets and missile. Each rocket launcher houses 19 70mm folding fin rockets, while the missile racks can hold up four radar or laser guided help on missile. These pylons will automatically articulate through 90 degrees to keep the weapons in fire constraints for as long as possible. Both the rockets and missiles can engage targets out of ranges of 8 kilometers, while the powerful 30mm cannon mounted underneath the fuselage can fly high explosive rounds out to beyond 4 kilometers with a cyclic rate of 625 rounds a minute. As you watch Gunship perform sideways laterals, you can see the Apache's impressive hover performance and a representative all-up weight. Above the main rotor disc, you'll notice the distinctive shape of the aircraft's fire control radar. This radar is able to scan out to 8 kilometers, detecting over 1,000 targets, prioritizing them, and offering the pilot 16 simultaneous firing solutions through the aircraft's weapons processes. Along with target detection and missile guidance, the radar is also capable of mapping the terrain ahead of the aircraft in flight to assist in navigation and terrain avoidance at night or in bad weather. On the nose of the aircraft is the Target Acquisition Designation Site, or TADS, housing the day TV and infrared cameras, as well as a laser for ranging and missile guidance. A further infrared sensor mounted above the TADS can be slaved to the pilot's helmet position, allowing flight at night in pitch black solely with reference to the image projected into his right eye from the helmet-mounted monocle. As seen earlier, this helmet site can also be used to control the position of the gun. The Army Air Corps was formed from the glider and air observation post squadrons of World War II and have played a key role in every major UK operation ever since. These modern helicopters are, as the aircraft were then, commanded, flown and supported by soldiers who were trained to fight predominantly in the land environment. The Army Air Corps continues to actively recruit both officer and senior non-commissioned aircrew, making the Army the only service that offers a flying career to both officer and soldier pilots. Staff Sergeant Mark Skelding is one of our soldier pilots. In the front seat today, he joined the Army Air Corps from the ranks of the Royal Horse Artillery, transferring from within the Army to complete his flying training. Completing another 180 degree return to target manoeuvre at the front, Tim now approaches head on for another look at the 360 degree wing over. This move demonstrates the awesome power of the two turbo mecha engines mounted either side of the fuselage. Each engine provides over 2,300 shaft horsepower, meaning together they produce more power than four Formula 1 racing cars. As the crew reset for the signature finale of the Apache display, we'd like to thank you, or we'd like to ask you to put your hands together and show thanks for our partners at Event Horizon for providing today's fantastic pyrotechnic effects. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're out today. This may be one that you'd like
flight to take home with you, so please do have your cameras at the ready for a final time. Ladies and gentlemen, the British Army Apache attack helicopter. Army Air Corps Apache helicopter. So on behalf of the whole team, Major Fitzroy, Staff Sergeant Skilding and Gunship will now perform the customary bow to thank you for your support. So please do give them a wave, put your hands together and show your appreciation for their efforts today. Well Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Attack Helicopter Display Team. share your pictures of the day using the hashtag AHDT. It's appreciated by the team and indeed other followers of the pages. You can find us by searching Facebook and Instagram with Attack Helicopter Display Team or on Twitter at AHDT. If you'd like to meet today's pilots, they will be available after they land at the Apache Static Display located at the base of the tower. We wish you an enjoyable rest of your weekend and as ever we thank you for your ongoing support to the British Armed Forces. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, once again, top stuff from the Attack Helicopter Display Team 2019. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, next display item, already taxi to the end of the runway. That will be the Team Baby Blue from the Royal Danish Air Force. And then to take you through what we have planned for the next hour, round about five past two, from the Royal Air Force, the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. We then keep back in time with the Rapide. And as we get to round about 25 to... Uh, yes, 25 to... We have uh, one of our anniversary displays, this time by two Jet Provosts and a Strike Master. And as we get ever closer 